Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. And this one definitely falls more into the views side of the equation. Daniel Dubois, Kevin Lorena. It was a pretty dramatic, crazy sort of fight. Certainly more than a dollop of controversy. And it's not often that I'll come back to a fight once I've done a post-fight review. But in the circumstances with all that's gone on, and a few extra things that I wanted to actually weigh in on because what happens during a fight, I'm taking notes, I'm sitting down at my little desk, all that sort of stuff. And then immediately, as soon as the fight finishes, uh, there might be a few things. And in this case, I went back and watched some of the replays and of the first knockdown, the ending, all that sort of stuff. But also, I'm just going straight into recording the video. So I edit it, and in the case of a heavyweight card where Tyson Fury and Derek Chisora was the next fight out, I'm going as quickly as I can to record, edit, and upload, do all the things, do a thumbnail, all that sort of stuff. And in the case of Dubois and Lorena, I'd basically managed to get everything ready to hit publish but i held off until fury and chisora was over but i'd put it together in i don't know 20 minutes or so so it's kind of it's instant thoughts and reaction but this one here it begs a few questions a few comments and a few thoughts because it really was bizarre so we had daniel dubois stopping kevin lorena at the end of the third round so the bell had gone a shot hits lorena and then a count is ringing out from ringside, but the referee, Howard Foster, just waves it off. So I spoke in the post fight about was there an issue of fairness that, given the circumstances of the fight, should Lorena, who was taking some heavy punishment, but the bell had gone, should he been given that minute? And I still think that is a question, but there were several other things that beg a little bit of extra commentary. And I'll, I'll start first with... The actual first knockdown in that first round because there seems to be a bit of a narrative now and the commentators were convincing themselves as they went along that it wasn't really a punch that it uh, that had sort of flawed Dubois it was more about some sort of injury and I see that narrative has been picked up but going back and watching it it does just look like there was a shot at the top of Dubois's head and he was feeling the effects of it the leg and whatever sort of he'd done to it, if it was knee or ankle, whatever, ligament damage has been suspected by the trainer Shane McGuigan. You know, that is a secondary thing. It certainly was a punch that did some damage, discombobulated Daniel Dubois. And a couple of things about that, because had the shoe been on the other foot, with that first round, Daniel Dubois goes down, has a count. Very shortly afterwards, he voluntarily drops to a knee and then he does that again he's given a count those times so one punch effectively caused three knockdowns and he looked like Bambi on ice and whether there was some sort of leg problem or whatever I think that is a secondary issue because it was a punch that did the damage but had the shoe been on the other foot do you think that Howard Foster would have given such leeway for Kevin Lorena to voluntarily take knees and be down three times in the first round absolutely not there was a side privilege here the home fighter getting some hometown sort of support from the referee here i absolutely believe that kevin lorena probably uh, he that fight would have ended it would have been waved off in the first round had the roles been reversed and then we would have had justification saying look this fight is safety to consider he went down three times Two times it wasn't even from a punch, you know, that was being thrown at the time, voluntarily going to the canvas. So somewhat controversial. I know some people have also brought up the fact, well, the WBA, three knockdown rule, all that sort of stuff. Well, that didn't come into play, but certainly there is a question about that sort of thing, the, the close prox proximity of going down. And was there some sort of duty of care to the fighter? Because he was in such a state, he couldn't stand on his feet. That is something just worth considering. But not only that, the first round, it ends almost 10 seconds early. 
And at the time, because I'm taking notes watching the fight, I didn't really sort of um, sort of take that in. It was only just after the fight where I started getting a few messages. That was a short round in the first round. And I timed it. From bell to bell, it was almost 10 seconds short. And in the circumstances where Dubois is flailing all over the place and going down, it looks suspicious as. And some people have said this was a fixed fight. People have claimed some of what went on in this fight, that there had to be other forces at play. And you have to question, because in this circumstance with the bell ending, it could only be one of two things, corruption or incompetence, maybe a bit of both. But certainly there was a short round when the home fighter was in dire straits. But there were a few other things, especially on the Kevin Lorena side, that don't make sense either. So round two. He had an opportunity to jump on Daniel Dubois, and he didn't. Super cautious, Dubois actually gets himself, gathers himself, starts getting back into the fight. This was a huge missed opportunity for Kevin Lorena. And in the circumstances where we know ultimately he lost, he's going to be kicking himself and ruining this because I don't believe he will ever get a fight of a similar magnitude in the heavyweight division. This was a cherry-picked, hand-picked opponent for Daniel Dubois to look good against. This is still part of his rebuild following the loss from Joe Joyce. This guy got an opportunity because they thought he was a beatable guy. Kevin Lorena will never get a shot at a heavyweight title. He will never get a similar opportunity, even though this is a secondary title, he will never get something similar. And because that he actually hurt Dubois means that he's also dangerous. It's a different situation with Jermaine Franklin the other week with Dillian White. Franklin doesn't really have power. He couldn't change the course of the fight with his punching power. Kevin Lorena just showed the heavyweight division that he can. He is one of these guys, and there's a number of them, decent power, smaller heavyweights, but ultimately they're probably not going to scale the heights of the heavyweight division. And some of that will be because of they have a certain level, but also some of it is because their promotional ties, considerations of that nature. So Kevin Lorraine has got himself to blame for not jumping in on Daniel Dubois when he had the chance. And I guess it's easy to say that, but I'm, I'm sure many were watching going, what's he doing here? He's been too patient. And I would also note the comments after the fight also are interesting we'll get to them soon so he doesn't jump on him but then you have in the third round where the fight ended uh, a situation where Kevin Lorena was dropped and then Daniel Dubois all over him so that ends in a sequence and where you've got a, a case where Dubois all over him right before the bell and despite the commentator saying he's not throwing punches there was a left hook that landed by Lorena that backed up Dubois momentarily and did catch him and hurt him to some extent but Dubois kept coming and he landed that vicious uppercut but then a shot comes in the as the bell's going and then the shot lands just after it but then it is waved off by the referee so the referee never made a move to make a count that happened at ringside but in the situation that the bell had gone, Lorena was still on his feet. And I know some people have come in and said, what, do you want Kevin Lorena to get brain damage or something? This is his life, his career. He actually had success in the fight. Dubois down three times in that first round. And the bell goes. Does he not deserve the opportunity for a minute rest? I mean, it seems like if the roles were reversed... Daniel Dubois absolutely would have got that time. And you can make a case that arguably he did from the first round. So it is super suspicious, that stoppage, controversial. But the thing is, when it happened, Kevin Lorena did not protest. Maybe that was because he was groggy from getting you know caught with a lot of big shots by Dubois. But it was bizarre. If I was in that situation, I'd like to think I would be angry thinking, well, the bell's gone. I deserve an opportunity to get into that fourth round. A minute's rest could make a huge difference. Bearing in mind, Dubois still looks shaky and apparently there was some sort of leg injury. So, yeah, it's strange. But stranger still, the reaction, the post from Kevin Lorena on Instagram. 
he's gone the complete opposite direction to what a lot of fighters would do saying this is heavyweight boxing i had daniel down and hurt three times in round one and in the third round i was on my ass and stopped on my feet as a fighter i really thought i could continue on as the bell went at the end of the third round but it wasn't my night well done daniel dubois and his team i will be back stronger than ever i gave it my all i'm gracious and humbled in defeat i will learn a lot from this experience thank you all of you for supporting me and thank you to my team and all my sponsors so gracious in defeat but given some of the circumstances of what happened you'd think he'd be saying look i don't think that was fair but making more of that it just feels like he should have been because it wasn't you know i think it was a case where that stoppage was dubious to say the least in the broader circumstances of the fight having the guy down three times and he was on his feet as the bell went at the end of round three that's not in that can't be disputed there was a shot that hits him straight after that does some damage but the referee's just straight in there and waving it off absolutely bizarre bizarre reaction from Lorena not really to go hey this is not fair maybe he'll leave that to his promoter to do a song and dance but there was another post and here it is that was an electric nine minutes in my boxing career heavyweight box heavyweight boxing at its best thank you London United Kingdom and Tottenham Stadium it was unreal Make of that what you will. And given the fact he didn't jump on Daniel Dubois in round two, didn't protest after the stoppage, certainly there have been people saying, was this a fixed fight? Did Lorena really even go there to win? People have been raising these questions in comment sections and on social media. And he doesn't sound like he was super disappointed at how things ended and that maybe he should have been given an opportunity and really making a case for that. I mean, often we say boxers are super deluded and they'll make up all sorts of stuff to justify a loss. Kevin Lorraine has gone the complete opposite way. Almost too gracious and too humble in defeat, especially as we're probably unlikely to see him at a top level again. He might be wheeled out as a sort of sellable B-side at some point, but I don't think that's going to be for any sort of heavyweight title. I don't think he'll get any sort of any opportunity close to what this was again but someone who is sort of sitting on his couch at home in australia looking at what's happened um, was daniel dubois because he was originally the name bandied around but then the british boxing board of control said no you can't fight daniel dubois is lucas brown so here's his thoughts on what happened and what he saw as he reflects on the board not allowing him to fight dubois so sometimes shit just makes sense in the end uh, the British Boxing Board of Control said I was too old to fight Daniel Dubois. Now, Daniel Dubois gets knocked down three times in round one. Comes back and wins. Well done, Daniel. Not knocking the guy in any way whatsoever. Uh, but at least it all makes sense as to why the British Boxing Board of Control didn't want me to fight Daniel Dubois for the WA uh, world title. So thank you to the British Boxing Board of Control for ruining another chance of me winning a world title. Um, but at least we all know the reason why, that's for sure.